charges. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Oh, my dear brothers, listen to what happened in the days of Heracle, king of Rome, concerning a man called Sargis of Aberga, who was part of the king's army, behold. The king made him governor of two provinces of Phrygia and Tartagia. As for Sargis, he was a man strong and angry that baptism imposed on Jews. So it is written in the book of his administration. It is written how the merciful king commanded all. The prefix, who were under his domination, how he ordered them to baptize the Jews who had converted to the Lord. When Sargis arrived in the province of Ephrathia, he ordered all the Jews, who were under his jurisdiction, to come to him. When they came, he said to them, Are you not the servants of the king, who hear his word and do his order? As for them, they said, Truly, we are the servants of the merciful king. Then Sari said to them, Behold, the king has commanded that you be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When they heard this word, they were seized with great fear. Terror seized them, and they could not say a word. Sargis said to them, Why are you silent? Will you say nothing? So one of them, called Jonah, answered and said to him, We will not do this, for the time has not come for us to be baptized in the house of the temple. At that moment Sargis became angry, jumped up, and hit the man. He said to these men, You, indeed, are not servants, if you do not fulfill the command of your Lord. When they had heard this, fear and terror seized them. Immediately, he ordered them to be baptized by violence, despite their wishes. Therefore, great sorrow came upon them. He who wrote this book says, Behold, I am Joseph, one of the Jews who was baptized, and I became a Christian. The Lord knows that great sorrow has overtaken us and tortures have ceased, because we were baptized against our will. Vision of Jacob Behold, a thought came to him that said, Perhaps because of this, faith and righteousness will come to me. Then he began to seek and question the Lord for many days. He raised his eyes to him and said, O oh my Lord and my God, if this law is right, reveal it to me and do not hide it from me. That night he saw in a dream a man, who was clothed in purple, who came to him and said to him, How long will you refuse to say that Christ is the Son of the living Lord? Will you not understand what the Lord has spoken, the mouth of the prophet David, who said, You are my son. I myself have begotten you today. From that day on, Jacob began to search. Reading the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, to understand the words that were in them, and to inquire to know the coming of Christ, the Son of the living Lord. Then he realized that he was the Christ, he who came in the days of Augustus Caesar, and who was born in Bethlehem. Conversion of Jacob After a few days, we met Jacob. Then he said to us, Concerning this, O brethren, I see that you are sorrows, and you are sad. We said to him, Yes, indeed, we are sad, and we are sad, because we have been baptized. He said to us, O brothers, do not be grieved, and do not, do not be sad because of this, but rather rejoice and exult. Come, let's go to a place, so that I can reveal to you what you need to know, that our Lord Jesus Christ is come into the world, so that you may not despise it in your heart. One of us, whose name was Isaac, answered him and said to him, I have a dwelling hidden. No one will see her. So we went with him, we gathered there and closed the doors. The coming of Christ. Jacob began to give us a presentation. He said, No, O my brothers and my fellow citizens, that the law and the prophets began by announcing the coming of Christ, Son of the living Lord. Behold, the Son of Righteousness has come, concerning whom the law and the prophets have prophesied, saying that he will be of the seed of Jesse and Judah, he who will reveal faith and righteousness and will give life to everyone who will be. Turn towards him. Indeed, the prophets prophesied through the Holy Spirit about his avenue, his incarnation, his birth, all the miracles he performed, his sufferings, his crucifixion, his death. His 
resurrection from the dead, his ascent into the heavens from which he had descended, his second coming in great glory, and, moreover, about the coming of the false messiah. They prophesied how he will remain on earth seven years and three months, and how he will also perish when the true Christ comes at the end of the world, and when he will reward each one according to his works. As the prophet Daniel said, I live in a vision of the night. Behold, and a cloud of heaven came like a son of man. He came to the Ancient of Days. He was given dominion, glory, and the kingdom. All peoples, nations, and tribes served him. As for his dominion, it is a dominion forever and ever, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is a kingdom that will not perish. Therefore the prophets prophesied and taught us the time of Christ's coming, that we should not perish, nor wander out of his way, nor receive any other Christ than the true Christ, who came for the salvation of those who believe in him. O my brothers, the Lord our God said, through the mouth of the prophet David, in Psalm 94, when you have heard the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. Don't exasperate him. Not like your fathers in the desert. O oh, my brothers, the Jews, like you know, supplicate day and night in order to see the coming of the true Christ, whom every human creature hopes for, the incredulity of the Jews. However, as for us, we have been ungodly in sin, because we thought in our hearts that he who was born of Mary, of the blessed virgin, was not Christ. We never wanted to hear its mention, nor the scriptures of the prophets, which prophesied about him. Although we read the scriptures of the prophets, we want to interpret them as our desired soul. Therefore our heart is hardened and thickened. As the said the prophet Isaiah, why have you caused us, O Lord, to wander out of your way and hardened our hearts, that we should not fear you? Wherefore the Lord commanded us in the holy scriptures of Pray and lift up our eyes to him, so that we do not wander out of his path. Behold, as for us, we have abandoned all this, because of the Sabbath regulation. We were rebellious, and we said, Christ is slow to come. We have rejected the word of the prophets, who prophesied about him. We have reached the height of ignominy, opprobrium, abjection, and rejection among all peoples. We begin to eat to the point of bursting, and to drink to the point of to get drunk. We have fornicated. We have sinned. We receive bribes. We love the accumulation of riches. We judged to capture favors. We have done all kinds of evil works. We have transgressed all the commandments of the Lord. As for what is right, it is fitting that we seek it with all our heart. We have neglected and we have not meditated on the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We did not believe in him. We said, why is he slow in coming? Indeed, the prophet who desired that Christ would come said, say, he will do nothing and he will not delay. Jacob's concerns. Jacob told us such words. The Lord knows that when they spoke to me about our Lord Jesus Christ and baptized me despite my will and made me a Christian from that day on, O oh my brothers, I have not been at peace. Neither day nor night, it was not pleasant for me to eat or drink. But on the contrary, I continually interceded with the Lord by fasting, by prayer, by weeping, by reading the scriptures of the law and the prophets. I continued to bring the scriptures to Rome, to go to the church and to the Tono oratories and to ask Christians to interpret the scriptures for me. So, I meditated on them in my heart and I said to my soul, O oh my soul, will sin then come upon me because I have been baptized? I found, in what I read, a prophecy of Moses. Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham, spoke a prophecy through the Holy Spirit about Christ. He said in the law, Zero Judah, your brothers will glorify you. Your hands will be on the backs of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. Judah is a lion's cub. Come up from your den, my son. You will lie down, you will sleep like a lion and like a lion's cub. 
no one will wake you up. The dominion shall not pass from Judah, nor the principality from its members, until he comes who is expected for Israel and is the hope of the peoples. S4 We, of my brothers, behold, we see that Christ, the hope of the people, has come. The prophet David said in Psalm 86, Of Zion it will be said, Men and men are born in it, and he himself, the Most High, founded it. As for the prophet Jeremiah, he said, This is the Lord, our God. No one else will become like him. He himself found all he himself found all the paths of wisdom, and gave it to Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, his beloved. Then he appeared on earth and became like a man. Again, Isaiah said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. We will call him Emmanuel, which means in his interpretation. The Lord is with us. Furthermore, the prophet Isaiah said, I went to the woman. Prophetess. She conceived and bore a son. The Lord said to me, Call him. Quickly activate the continuation of the plundering the work of Christ. Yes, truly, O my brothers, behold, Christ has pursued death, redeemed the prey from the hand of the devil, and Sheol, and put an end to the worship of idols. As for us Jews, who did not believe in him, he has driven us out, and carried us captive out of our regions, and from our habitation, and has scattered us among all peoples. It is in order. To demonstrate the truth of the word of our father, the prophet Jacob, who said to his son Judah, In the law your hands will be on the backs of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. O my brothers, see that this what Moses said about Jacob, by this word, is correct. No, O my dear brothers, that Adam, the father of us all, when he sinned, the devil subjected him and his children to an evil slavery. As the Lord said through the mouth of the prophet David, indeed, the gods of the people are demons. As for the law and the prophets, they were not able to save the sons of men from the hand of Satan, for many kings. Scholars and doctors of the law have erred. As for the prophets, they announced in advance that Christ would become the salvation of the entire race of men. What Christ is... When the word of the Lord came, it was made man of the Virgin Mary, of the descendants of David. He enjoyed becoming a man. He became like men and appeared in their appearance. Indeed, it is not possible for man to see the Son of the Lord, except only in the flesh. When he became a man, his hands were on the backs of his enemies, as our father, the prophet Jacob, said. As for Christ, through the flesh he is man, but through the word he is the creator God. In his incarnation, he seemed weak to them, but when they heard the word of the divinity, they fled. When he stretched out his hands on the cross, his enemies were shamed and lost hope. Therefore it is proper for every knee to prostrate and bow. Before Christ, for he has become a brother to us through the flesh, which he took from Mary. By his divinity he has overcome his enemies, so that no one should be proud and say, I will not bow down a flesh which is, like me, created. For us, we prostrate ourselves, we bow before the word, and we glorify the word of the Lord, who took flesh from us. As the prophet Daniel predicted, I live in a cloud of heaven like a son of man. He came to the Ancient of Days. He was given dominion, glory, and the kingdom. All peoples, nations, and tribes served him. The prophet Isaiah said, Indeed, a child has been born to us, a son is given to us. The primacy will be on his shoulder. He will be called the angel of great counsel, because he will bring peace to princes. As for his own life, he will lay it down before him. There will be no end before him. His peace will be on the throne of David. His kingdom will be strong. He will accept justice and righteousness from now on and forever. Moses, for his part, said in the law, When I asked the Lord God in Mount Horeb on the day when you gathered together and said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord again, our God, as for this great fire, let us not see it any more, that we may not die. The Lord said to me, All that they have said is true. 
I will raise up for them a prophet from among their brothers who will be like you. I will put my word in his mouth. He will expose them to them as I ordered him. Any soul who does not obey his word will be struck out of the book of life. Coming of Christ. Have you seen, O oh my brothers, that this word demonstrates and proves that Christ, the word of the Lord, who is existent with the Father, came, taught us the mystery of his divinity, as man, and gave us the New Testament, i.e. the Holy Gospel? Have you heard what Moses said, I will raise up for them a prophet from among their brothers who will be like you? I will put my word in his mouth? This prophet is Christ who brought the Holy Gospel. Furthermore, the prophet Jeremiah said, concerning the testament of Christ, that there will come, after the law of Moses, another testament which will be greater than it. He said, Behold, days are nothing, saith the Lord. I will establish for the house of Israel and for the house of Judah the new testament, not a testament like the old testament which I established for their fathers. When I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt, because, certainly, they did not remain in the observation of my pact. As to I have neglected them, says the Lord. This is the testament that I will establish for the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts. I will write it in their minds. So I will make them my people and become their God. They themselves will become my people. No one will teach any more who his fellow citizen, who his brother, nor will he say to them. Know the Lord, for all will know me, both small and great, and will know that I forgive their sin and remember their sin no more. The New Testament. When Christ came, the true king, he preached the gospel of the New Testament. He commanded us to love. Our enemies and to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he saved from idol worship. Every creature has known the Lord. As for the one who established another law, after Moses, it is Christ, our true king. Let's not despise him. Behold, he has come, as the Lord has said. Again, the prophet Ezekiel said, understanding that another testament, which will be better than the law of Moses, will be established. But I will remember my covenant which I made with you when you were little, and I will establish for you my eternal pact. You will remember your way, moreover, he said, this saying will not end, but will continue until the third and fourth generation. I will take revenge. However, I will not demand the punishment of the son's sin in place of that of his father, but I will act as if it had not been said, the ancestors eat of the green fruit. As for the children, their teeth have become dull. But, on the contrary, the one who eats green fruit will be the one whose teeth will become dull. Here then, the law, certainly, demonstrated the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, because the race of men cannot see the word of the Lord, which is invisible. Except, however, in the flesh which he has taken from us. This word is the true Christ. As the prophet Isaiah said, it is not by embassy, nor by deputation, but it is in person that he will come to save them. Again he said of Christ, this is my son, whom I love, and in whom I am well pleased, I will set my mind on him. He will bring the right to the peoples. He will not shout, he will not vociferate, his voice will not be heard outside, he will not break the broken reed, he will not extinguish the fuse that smoke. On the contrary, through justice he will restore the right, it will shine, it will not disappear until justice returns to the earth. The people will put their trust in his own name. The Savior Christ. Have you noticed, O oh my brothers, as the Lord, the Lord of all, has said, that through the name of Jesus Christ every creature shall live? This Jesus is the Christ who was born of the Virgin Mary. Of moreover, he said, behold, the Old Testament is passed away, the new is revealed. I you will make it heard. What is the Old Testament? Isn't that the law? And what is the new, if not only the Holy Gospel? The prophet David said, glorify the Lord with new praise. Somewhere he said, glorify him from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, and in all the isles. The sea is the world. Will it be understood that, from the beginning, its glory is throughout the world?
world? As for the prophet Isaiah, he said, The Savior will come from Zion. He will take away sin from Jacob and will exist with man forever. See then, O my brothers, what the scripture has said. She said that it is not by the law of Moses that human creatures will be saved, but only that they will live. This is the book of wisdom in which the Lord commanded to listen. The word of the law which will endure forever. Anyone who believes in her will live. But whoever does not believe in her, let him die. Truly in flesh and spirit. We must, O oh my brothers, accept this book and become strong through it, that we may live and not perish. Indeed, this book said, Turn, O oh Jacob, to the Lord and cover yourself in his light, for by his light you will live. But now, O oh my brothers, I will expose that the New Testament of Christ is light, justice, and eternal life. Indeed, the prophets prophesied that it is of the Holy Spirit. As for whoever does not believe in him, he will go to perdition and corruption, into eternal torment which will have no end. Therefore, O oh my brothers, we must not live by the law of the Jews, after Christ, the King of the whole world, has come. Indeed, the prophet Jeremiah said, Behold, the days will be nothing, says the Lord, I will establish for David a light of righteousness in this place. We know that David is the father of Christ in the flesh. Behold, Christ will reign and do righteousness and justice on earth. In the days of Christ, Judah and Israel will not be separated, but they will remain preserved. We will call Christ Emmanuel the obedience to Christ. You have heard of the righteousness that will come to him who believes in Christ. Do not separate, O oh my brothers, and do not. Do not stray from faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, our King and our God. Those who were with Jacob answered and said, Why did Moses say, Keep this law, that we may live by it? As for you, Jacob, you said, We must not live by the law of the Jews, nor keep the Sabbath. For us, we can keep the Sabbath, and we do not believe in Christ. Jacob answered and said to them, When Moses commanded to keep the law, which the Lord had given to the Israelites, he said to the people, Keep it, and when we are having entered into the land, which the Lord your God will give you, do not learn to act according to the impurity of the peoples. Indeed, they erred in evil deeds. This is why the Lord rejected them. As for you, Israel, do not do this. The prophet that the Lord will give you will be one of your brothers, he who will be like me. The Lord your God will raise it up for you. Listen to it and obey him. But now, O oh my brothers, behold Christ, that is, the word of the Lord, has come. He became man without change. He became the reconciler between men and the Lord. This is why Moses commanded that we should submit to this prophet and listen to his word. Behold, this prophet has come, it is Christ. As for anyone who does not believe in him and does not listen to his word, Moses will fight against him in the last day, because he has transgressed his commandment. The prophet Malachi said, The son of righteousness will rise on those who fear my name. Life will be under the wings of Christ. David said, The day is yours and the night is yours. Behold, the Lord has established the light of the moon and the stars as a guide in the night, that men may go their way on the earth. For those who travel on the sea, they also go to the splendor of this light. When the morning star, that is to say the sun, has risen, the light of the day puts an end to the light of the moon. Stars and luminaries, which shine in the night and do not shine with the light of the sun in the day, because of the intensity of the light of the sun. Indeed. It is not that I say that the light of the moon and the stars be not good. Far be it from him who created them. But rather, he created them, giving them power to shine in the darkness of the night. Such then are the law and the prophets. They remained, in their time, like the moon, the stars, and the lights, and shone for men. Because of the power of the devil who had subjugated men in those days. Indeed, he had power over the souls of men, over the righteous and sinners, both who obeyed him. 
None of them awakened his heart to the Lord, his creator, because of the multitude of darkness that had come upon them. Crime and sin increased enormously. There were fools among them who said, whenever, you have heard the word of the prophets, the evil has been considerable upon us. Then the children of Israel, the people of the Lord, turned towards the worship of idols and adhered to their filthiness. But when our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, came, that is to say the Son of Justice, the light of the whole world, he who can heal our illness, he caused the strong light to rise upon us. Of the New Testament law, as for us, we have not bowed before him and we did not follow him who revealed wonders to us. The Liberator Christ, as the prophet Isaiah said, be strong, O weak hands and lame feet. Comfort your hearts, O pusillanimous ones, and do not be afraid. Behold, our God will restore right. He himself will punish. He will come and he will save us. On that day, the eyes of the blind will be healed and the deaf will hear. In that day, the lame will run like the deer and the tongue of the dumb will be repair. For those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, light has dawned for them. But from now on, O oh my brothers, we no longer need the light of the moon, the stars, and the lights, which shine in the night. This is good for those who worship idols. But for us, Christ, the Son of true righteousness, enough. Behold, the law has been revealed, and the prophets have given light to men, like the moon and the stars, and the night. As for night, it signifies the darkness of the work of sin.